Every year, we name an honorary chair for the Take a Swing at Cancer golf tournament. This person has been working behind the scenes of every golf tournament we've had since its inception. She created the logo that we are all so familiar with. She's designed every brochure, newsletter, postcard, course sign, and so much more. Without her, our event wouldn't look nearly as pretty as it does. She's a dedicated community volunteer. Everyone knows her for her sense of humor and her signature style. She's an amazing friend, graphic designer, handbell ringer, and cherubs teacher. If you know her, you love her. I am pleased to introduce you to our 2022 Take a Swing at Cancer Honorary Chair, Leslie Gagan. I went for my annual physical at Elite Medical and the nurse practitioner, who's very mean, Melinda Ingram told me I could not skip my annual mammogram, even though there was no breast cancer history in my family. She said I was at the age you have to have a, uh, just a screening mammogram every year just to be on the safe side. And so she made me my appointment before I left. And a month later, I go and get my mammogram. Didn't think anything about it. They found something a little suspicious. They wanted to look at it, but she said 90% of the time, it's nothing. They did uh, another mammogram, and then they did an ultrasound, and then they did another test. Didn't th wasn't worried about it. You know, they kept on telling me, you know, usually these are benign. There's nothing to worry about. So I didn't worry about it. And about, this was in October of 2018. And then in middle of November, Melinda calls me and goes, your test results aren't good. I have an appointment with you with Dr. Gilliland. Go straight over to Surgery Associates and meet with Dr. Gilliland. You have breast cancer and we're trying to determine what kind. And it was like, oh, well, okay then. <laughs> So I go over, I meet with Dr. Gilliland. He explains to me that they will be testing the tumor and seeing what kind. And to make a long story short, after several phone calls and tests, I ended up having triple negative breast cancer, which he said is very aggressive and very, um, they never find this in stage one. But thanks to Melinda and me having a screening mammogram and they catching it in stage one, my prognosis was a lot better than if I had skipped a year and had gone without a mammogram. At two o'clock in the morning, when you're all by yourself, you don't realize. But then you go, I could hear my mama already said, Leslie, you're not giving up till you find the give up office. And I'd be going, Phyllis, I'm looking for the give up office tonight. But then the sun comes up and every time I was at my lowest, somebody would show up. Like, when the night I was looking for a give up office, I woke up in the morning and the church was there with flowers and they were yellow roses. My mama's favorite. And it was like, okay, Phyllis, we got this. You go to get chemo and there's other people all around you that you look at them and you're thinking, how are they going to make it? And then you know the foundation is there helping them. They have the patient care funds. And then you see... The, the little volunteer comes through with snack carts and the, what the foundation does just in the chemo bay. And I don't know how these patients do it when they don't have pain meds or nausea meds and the foundation helps with the meds. I don't know what, how I would have survived without nausea meds and how some of these people can't afford it. And the foundation steps in and helps them with pain and nausea meds. That's just a gift from above. The whole experience, it was not scary to me because I just had, I had trust in Dr. Kellum and trust in Dr. Gilliland. He told me what he was gonna do. He gave me options and it was like, Dr. Gilliland, I do not know if I want a lumpectomy or a mastectomy. Tell me what you suggest. And he told me, you know, with this, he would suggest a lumpectomy, but if he got in there and noticed anything else, did he have permission to do a mastectomy? And it was like, sure, you do. Because he was, to me, he had my best interest in heart. This was not his first rodeo. It was my first rodeo. And with Dr. Callum, it was the same thing. He took his, took his time, explained to me in detail what was happening, what was going on, what my treatment plan was. And what really helped me, about a couple of weeks later, one of my friends, who is a retired um, breast cancer navigator, 
had lunch with me, wanted to talk to me about it, see what was going on. She looked at my treatment plan and she said, that is exactly what they would be doing in MD Anderson if you had gone to MD Anderson. Same protocols, same everything. So it was like, yay, I can get all this care here and I have to go anywhere. Yeah. And let all my sisters and all my coworkers and all my church sisters and all my hoop sisters take care of me right here in Tupelo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>